I know you're right. There we go. Also, my headphones disconnected for some reason. Oh, well, who cares? I don't need those. Um, okay, so external marketing, what you present to the outside world, what can we do in this time to like revamp that? And then internal marketing is going to be the culture of your chorus, how you are approaching and working with leadership and also um, how you're working with your members. And this can really come down to like member retention, member recognition, et cetera. And like, why are we even talking about this? I think when Karen and I discussed this class, even though we've been doing this for like 18 months now, it's a really good time to, it's still a really good time to work on some things that we don't have time to work on when we're, you know, consumed with performances and competition and rehearsals and coachings. So you can hopefully pull people's energy so that they can help you with these projects. Um, and then when we're back into the world of performing and coaching and comp competing and all those pieces, we'll have a fresh step and, and hopefully a new pep in our step with some fresh ideas and fresh approaches. Um, does that feel good to everybody? Yeah, so we're gonna, I, I, a couple of people just popped on and we're gonna really have some discussion here. So I want everybody to participate if you feel comfortable. Um, and I think that sometimes rejuvenating our brand might feel like we need to do something really fancy with like graphic designer, but it can be way more simple than that. And I also think that right now, it's not just rejuvenating our brand, it's like rebooting our brand because we've all kind of gone a little bit dormant and interior, like we're so interior right now. We're working with our courses on Zoom or in person, but we're not doing a lot with the outside world. So we've got to start thinking about that again so that when the time comes, we're not a little shell-shocked by the, the world being a part of our culture again. So let's start with external marketing. So external marketing is going to be like logo changes, slogan changes, a new website, um, marketing materials that you've never used before, and then also opportunities that you want to take advantage of, uh, of maybe you've brainstormed with a team during this time. And when the time comes, you want to tackle those opportunities again. So I'm going to open the floor. If you've done anything like this, please share. And then we'll move on to questions about how to do things, or we can share other ideas that may come up. So has anybody done any rebranding over the past 18 months? No, but Karen said to me, a cupcake, don't fall off your chair, said to me a month and a half, about six weeks ago, you know, I'm thinking maybe we should change our logo. And I was like, no, it's a huge undertaking. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nadine. But well, we, we didn't necessarily rebrand because we did it a couple of years ago where we didn't feel like doing that again, but we we stepped up our marketing efforts a lot and we built up a team, which is now, actually we have a marketing team of six people right now who all have their very specific things that they are taking care of. So that worked very well. In other words, you know, because we had all this time on our hands, we decided to get busy. So yeah, it paid off well, we have some new members. At the same time, you were looking for a director. We still are. So, I, you know, there was a lot. There was a lot to do. But marketing is involved in everything that touches um, the outside of the chorus, mm -hmm. our our image, uh, how we recruit members, what we do, etc. So it's uh, it's it's more like um, it was stepping it up because it was things that we hadn't done before. So it's kind yeah. Of, you guys are a great example of taking this time and using it wisely. And um, you used your resources too. You reached out to me and to some other people to help you put together your new marketing materials. And, but then you ran with it on your own and it came out so great. And I'm really proud of you guys because even though you don't have a director right now, you're doing, you're doing what you can with what you have. And um I think it's really great. So. Which chorus are you? I'm sorry. Acapella sounds chorus. Sorry, I'll I'll change my okay my name. 
I know I should have done introductions. Sorry. I... Yeah. We could all put our courses up, I guess. Huh? I, I put it in every time it keeps disappearing because I'm not doing it in the right place. <laughs> well, and when to... you, if you speak, you can introduce yourself. That'd be great too, really quickly. If you uh, right click on your name, uh, you can rename yourself. So you yeah, can. Yeah, I think we just did yeah. that. But it just, it goes away after every session. I lose it, but I know yeah. there's another place I can put it where it stays permanently. And, but I just- You can you put it in anymore. your Zoom profile. You can change your name okay, like yeah. on the yeah. Zoom website and it will stay. It should stay. I mean, I can't make any guarantees. Technology yeah. is a little tricky sometimes. So Nadine, can I ask you, um, so you said each of those six people has very specific tasks. Can you share with us what those are? Well, we have somebody who takes care of the website. Then we have somebody who just takes care of Facebook. Uh, another one, we 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 revived our Facebook because it was kind of dormant. We also have, we're all still on Instagram now. That is kind of new. Although we had the account, we weren't using it. So it's just like, we were just building up everything that had been, like Lala said in the beginning, you know, when we are busy with learning our songs and getting ready for competition, you just, you don't just, take all this time to do it necessarily and uh and so um and then there's you know we have a head of marketing and um we get together regularly and see you know what what do we need to do what do we need to change is do we have to update our website what can we do differently how can we reach people differently so it was it was a lot of fun working in, in a team like that it's just it was it was it's been very interesting Forgive me for not knowing, where are you located and how many people are in your course at this point? Well, we're in the Creator Montreal area, in the West Island of Montreal, actually. And um, we and we started COVID, we, uh, at the beginning of COVID, we had 35 members and active members. And I think we have about 25 uh, left right now, which is it's not bad. Some have become associates, some have left. Some said, oh, maybe I'll come back when this is all over. Um, some are just not have just they just be, paid their member membership dues all along, but they weren't on Zoom. They didn't feel like Zooming. So we also have to get these people back on board. Like our internal marketing is going to be important uh, soon as well. So we uh, so we get everybody back um, as much as possible. Thank you for sharing that, because Sana New England is in the exact same place. We probably have thirty members officially on the books. And now that we're occasionally getting back together, um, maybe 10 or 11 people do that. And the rest zoom in on Facebook, but <clears throat> totally different than we used to. So I'd love to respond to Lala to your initial question about rebranding and doing anything different. Sony hasn't done any of that because what we realized at the beginning of COVID um, was we needed people to know that we were alive and that we were still singing. And um, a couple of you may have been there. It was Sunday, March 8th, I think, of 2020, when fortuitously we had a cabaret. That was our last show because the following Monday, the very next day, the place where we rehearse was no longer allowing, it was part of a senior center, no longer allowing outsiders in. That was the last time we did a performance and thank God we videotaped it because we had a couple of um, really good segments. In fact, one of them, one of the nicest pieces was our two minute rendition of Pure Imagination. So I tell you that because the first thing we decided we needed to do to let people know we were alive and well, was in April of 2020, I reached out to everyone who had hired us in the past couple of years with the video of Pure Imagination <clears throat> on the cabaret. And we wished that everybody would be safe. And we said that, you know, we are alive, we are keeping safe, we are zooming together to keep ourselves, keep our spirits uplifted. We gave a nice, very nice message and said to them, we hope you are doing the same and we just want to reach you with this musical message of harmony. And we got back a few, you know, pretty much everybody, because there weren't a lot of people who had hired us over the previous two years, I don't know, maybe a dozen. And people really appreciated that. 
So that was in right. April of 2020. And then um, shortly before Christmas of 2020, I did the same thing with a holiday song. And all it was was a greeting showing that we're still making music. How are you doing? You know, et cetera. Then um, we do singing Valentine's. It's always been a big moneymaker for us. And thank goodness, a couple of years ago, in addition to sending out quartets, we had started creating egrams where we had um, recorded the full chorus and we sent out, we, we gave options of a, a platonic package versus a romantic package and we had people order them. So in January of 2021, I reached out to everybody on our mailing list, folks who've used us, folks who ordered in the past, and there had to be 300 of them over the last couple of years. Plus I found a West Hartford performers showcase that we had attended with its bound book of all the attendees. And I created a spreadsheet with like 80 names of those people. And I took, um, actually, I don't think I sent an old egram. I just think I reached out to everybody to suggest that they use an egram as a way to send music, whatever. We, we did really well because egrams are only 10 bucks a piece versus a quartet that's 40. So I think we might've gotten 80 orders. And because I was doing everything and everything came to me, it gave me a chance to connect with people and it came from me. So a lot of people recognized my email. So that was wonderful. And that was what we did in February of 2021. So in the meantime, I kept the chorus posted on what we were doing. So the chorus would feel that the world knew that we were still alive and well. You know, we had weekly Zoom rehearsals, which we've been having. And it's nice because we can stay connected. And every once in a while, when there's an educational guest who has Zoomed in, that's when we might get 25 of our members to attend. But the big thing is, you know, I don't know um, how many people we might have lost. We just don't know. Marion just sent out an email today saying that we did sign up to perform at the holiday um, party at the Wadsworth Athenaeum in Hartford that we usually do their festival of trees and fine arts and Marion assured everybody that we could do it masked and that would be spread. But basically I'm thinking why rebrand and why reach out to people and change your marketing when the issue is we still have to get the chorus to be willing to come together and sing. And, and that's where we have to focus. And we have to work on our vocal skills because Lord knows we all sound like frogs. Um, and meanwhile, we'll just use old video material to reach out to people and let them know we're alive and well. So sorry for chewing your ear off, but that's what- No, that's great. I, I, I agree with, with you about the importance of reaching out to people who have hired you in the past. And that's actually something we're actively working on. We've asked our performance manager to dig into our archives and make us up a list of people who have hired us in the past that we can reach out to. And, and it, I don't know what you'd reach out to them with um, because I mean, you guys- Well, actually, now it's gonna be your, a video clip. <laughs> well, when I saw your first time you were singing in a garage, there were like yeah. 30 of you there. Yeah. and. I thought that was really cool, but you know, we've got 10 of us at this point doing yeah. this stuff. So yeah. Yeah, no, I love the idea of sending some kind of video, you know, something that they can watch or listen to rather than just an email. <clears throat> yeah. And if you can literally, you know, I, I don't know if you guys do Valentine's, but if you can come up with something that a small group does, um, you know, we, we have talked about using technology and you know, we've watched what other courses and men's courses and people around the, the globe have done and created these amazing montages with people singing. But mm -hmm. our members just don't feel that they have the technology thinking about trying to do that, stresses them out. So that's just not on our plate at this point. So yeah, having video footage is great. Yeah. I think those were like a lot of great ideas and I definitely wrote them down myself to bring to my course, but I, I did hear what you said at the end about why are we focusing on rejuvenating our brand. It's not so much about rebranding, it's about rejuvenation. 
and putting ourselves back out there. And first, we're just touching on external marketing because it's still in, like you said, you, you guys have been doing all along, Judy, you never let, you always let people know you're still there, but some courses haven't done that. And so I think it's important to now be like, it's been 18 months, but we're still here kind of thing. So doing the things, I mean, Judy could have taught this class, doing the things that, you know, she was talking about sending out messages, re revamping your, your social media, maybe just adding an extra post a week, or if you haven't really been posting, um, then try to revive that. And so people can see you're there. Um, if you have an email list and you haven't sent anything out lately, just send a quick hello. We're still here where this is what we're up to. Um, I think just kind of trying to put a little bit of pep in our step so that hopefully over the next year, as we can start to reemerge, um, we can, people can see that we're still here and alive. Have and chambers of commerce in your towns, because it's also an opportunity to start from scratch and introduce yourself to people and say, yeah. you know, one of the, certainly one of the hardest things to do during this time of a pandemic is sing in harmony on Zoom. Uh, but we just <laughs> want to let you know that we, we do that. And um, so we just send out our you know, greetings to you all and let us know if we can somehow raise your spirits, you know, whatever. But it's a chance to reach out to town organizations to you know, anything. Nadine. Oh, I was just going to mention that another thing that we revived, actually, we, the feature was there. We never used the newsletter feature on our website. And we have a very extensive um, uh, uh, contact list. And so we started doing uh, quarterly newsletters. And so we're now we're going to be at our fourth newsletter in January. So it's been a success, too. Like we did a, a food drive because we got nothing else to do last year. We did a food drive in the, in the spring and a lot of alumni showed up and brought uh, their contributions. So they felt, felt kind of still connected to their old chorus, even, even if they're not there anymore, because we, we, we just, uh, well, celebrated. We just had our 55th birthday. And so they, they, feel, they feel a connection and they want to contact and, oh, I'm so glad you're still there. And I hope you're going to have a, a performance very soon because I'll be there. And so people are actually looking forward to us going back to being active in the community and, and, and doing things, the things that we used to do, performances, sing outs for Christmas, caroling here and there. And people yeah. are eager now. I'm, to, to, to get us over because I, I've been on the phone with a gentleman like four times and he really, he wants to pay a $6,000 to come and sing 12, 12 out, not 12 hours straight, but they want to revive their community, like the street where the businesses are and they want to do something fun. And caroling is one of those things, do something to do something fun for the people who come. Obviously it's outside, it's not ideal for us, but just saying, I said, <laughs> We really can't do it. I don't. I don't care how much money you're going to offer us. We haven't sing. We haven't sung together in 18 months. We had two practices with masks on. We sounded awful. I don't know if you all experienced <laughs> something like that. It, it was we're two we're two meters apart. It's just like we're not. This is not us, and this is not something we want to offer anybody in any community, even for free. We don't want to do that. So it's. Um, you know, it, it's it's very hard because now that there's a demand, we can't we can't offer. So that's a, it's a, it's a tricky part. But um, if you can get your your group to to do some caroling, maybe you know you can you can find a spot to go outside somewhere uh, uh, near a mall. Uh, um, we have some villages here that you can uh, can accommodate that. They put up a Christmas tree. We can just go stand there and and sing. To do that when you say caroling do you have a holiday repertoire we have three songs <laughs> because we have yeah. had the same holiday repertoire for years and you know we might yes, have two <laughs> songs and each yeah. one is 90 the thing long, is said, but marion's putting them on the rehearsal schedule now yeah that's, that's what we're doing okay. but only the three songs because unfortunately after the last performance we had in 1999 for christmas we had a we had a concert um 
we the, the director our director had retired most of the songs so we don't really want to step on her toes and go and get them out of retirement so the only three ones that we have left is what we're going to sing so and then also there are some that are still uh, to be approved uh, and through the uh, the song assessment tool and they they they're not ready yet so it's it's we're, we're very limited very limited yeah I think that was a good, I was, I had opportunities on here, so we'll go ahead and talk about that. I think some really great opportunities this time of year that are outdoors, and I know we all live in a colder part of the U.S., but if you can rally or, you know, bundle up for even just half an hour, an hour, think about the morale that a boost that could give your chorus to go sing at a tree lighting or um, like a community, outdoor community um, there was somebody that around here, they were thinking about doing this last year, but then it didn't work out. I think they're doing this year. I don't sing with Royal River anymore, but I think they're doing this. It's like a skate park out ice skating rink. And they're having like a Rockefeller day. And so they want some car carolers there. And so I think they're hiring Royal River to do that. And it's just for like an hour, I think, because it's going to be cold, but it's like kind of Cool. So looking for different events going on in your community and even if they haven't reached out to you, reach out to them and say, hey, would you like some carolers there? Or, And if you don't have a lot of Christmas reps, guys, look at your rep and see what is uplifting. It doesn't all have to be holiday music. Sing a holiday song and then an uplifting song and then a holiday song. You know, people want to hear us sing. And I also hear the piece about not singing well, which we're going to talk about in internal marketing a little bit, but I think that that we've, we've got to think, like, eventually we have to put ourselves back out there, and I totally understand not wanting to sing what you feel like is poorly to an audience. Um, I also think that Gail Dimstick was saying today on an earlier class, maybe it's more about confidence than skill. And the skills that we had are still there. And our confidence right now is could be really low. And so trying to approach it, I mean, and we're not talking about music team here. So we kind of have to be tread on carefully because I'm that's not what we're talking about. But marketing is kind of a part of every part of the chorus. And so talk to your music team about how can we approach this differently? Maybe it's not so much about skill, maybe it's about confidence and um we still have the skills and remind your members of that. Um, and you can also look into things like if you have someone in your course who is particularly skilled or someone in the region, maybe it's time to start getting members to helping their own voices get back. Could there be a series of PVIs that everyone takes or something along those lines so that individually they're working on their voices again? And we have a lot of great resources within our region. Um, that of people who are able to give PBIs. And I think right now in the digital world, singing one-on-one -on -one with someone who can hear you and give you feedback might be the best option because of Zoom, obviously we can't actually hear each other. So that's my two cents about all of that. I'm not sure if it's per se, the, the vocal skills per se, I think it has a lot to do with the very new situation. We left the risers standing close together and singing, you know, in close harmony. And we're coming back and there's no risers. We're so far apart, can hardly hear each other. We're singing through masks. It's a very, um, very unknown, strange situation that we have to sing in right now. I think that has to mm -hmm. to do with it. And I think that after a couple of practices, if we get used to, and, and there may be a chance that we can get let go of the masks within a couple of weeks, we, we get new, new um, regulations all the time. Uh, it will help if we can practice together like that so that we could yeah. get used to what we sound like under these different circumstances. And, probably has a okay. lot to do with it. Linda. Um, I just want to tell you, if you can stand being out in the cold, um, our chorus is kind of over it. They don't want to be out in the cold. But if you're further north, maybe you're a little bit more hardy. Um, <laughs> singing in a parking garage is wonderful. The sound is incredible. You can hear even if you're standing really apart from each other. We rehearsed all summer long in that in that garage. and 
we feel really good about how we're sounding. We every week, first of all, the rehearsals are so much fun. It's it's so freeing and so enjoyable just to go and, and sing and not feel pressure and not feel you just you just do what you want to do, what you can do. And everybody's just so happy to see everyone. And we do normally, I would say, get between 25 and 35 people, but we've had as many as 40 a couple of times. And um, really, it does wonders for your confidence. It does wonders for your ears. And you'll be surprised. You probably sound a lot better than you think you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know it is tricky because winter's coming, so it's taking all of our outdoor opportunities away. Um, but parking garages and Royal River was rehearsing in our amphitheater that happened to be under a bridge. So only there was, it was encapsulated in reverberating masses. I don't know what the right word is, but, and that, that was actually very cool too. And they were singing masked and you could still hear each other really well. So if you can find a rehearsal space where sound can reverberate, um, that's a good option. I don't know how we you did know, it. With we found a new church, a small Bethany Lutheran church in West Hartford at a intersection and uh, Jane Moore found it. And so we, at first we were standing in the pews and those were hard because you're standing sideways. And you know, then we finally got the bright idea that we could go up where Marion was and we could stand there and because there were like three different levels and, and, and the acoustics are great. That's so. great. Yeah, I think anything, and this is, I know this seems maybe not in the realm of what we're talking about, but it is. When you are part of the marketing team, you want to make sure the space you're rehearsing in makes sense for the, what you need in the moment so that people are attracted to you. So if that means helping find the right rehearsal space, even if it's one or two times that you're borrowing a space, um, I would say, in my opinion, that's part of the marketing job because you have to make sure it's attracting people, including the members that are already struggling and, and need a reason to come. So think about that a little bit more. And I, everybody's area is different, but um, I think that there's some good information there. And I would say, I'm not trying to rush this along, but we have only half an hour left and we have a whole nother section to cover. But in external marketing, the last thing is, even though this isn't the focus of this class, our focus is really on these pieces of how can we have people see us again. I do just want to touch briefly on materials that you're using, whether they're digital or otherwise, um, just because I want, if someone needs help with that, I want to make sure we talk about it. So does anybody have, like, let's say in the past two years, something new you've tried or something that's been fun to work with material wise, whether it's digital or physical? Or do you have a question about something you thought about, but you're not sure how to implement it? Has anyone uh, delved into Twitter or TikTok? Oh, we just started doing TikTok in Millennium and it's actually really fun. Um, we started, we're doing it easy. So right now we do, we've been learning TikTok dances as our physical warm up, and then we film it and we're posting it as a chorus. And we've actually had some people really say like, that's really cool that you could pull that off with so many people. So that's been fun, but we haven't gone like full force into TikTok. Um, and Twitter, we don't, it's words and we're a visual audio mm -hmm. group. So I don't think Twitter has a place. It, personally for me, Twitter doesn't feel like, unless you just want to tweet out your performances, but honestly, that's not, I don't find a sweet Adelman's audience there, so. Right. Well, yeah. at this point, I mean, you know, as the kids say, Facebook is for old people. <laughs> and um, that's where we do mostly everything. And we do have the link so that it automatically posts to Instagram but nobody really monitors that or adds content to Instagram by itself. And I really do think that if we wanna attract a more diverse membership and younger membership, we really need to delve into TikTok. Um, but it's kind of daunting to look at and I keep asking my kids if they'll help me figure it out and they say yes and then they don't. So um, we yeah, need to find 
that's something when that I can do. <laughs> I can do a class on that for sure. Um, I've done a lot of reading about TikTok and I'm very fortunate to have fellow members in Millennium. and we, we actually are, tend to be on the younger side as a chorus. We yeah. have a lot of younger members. And so I'm not doing this by myself in Millennium. So we have like five of us that are all in our, we have six of us that are in our thirties. And um, even though we're not a TikTok generation, we can kind of tap into that a little bit. We have one member in our twenties and she tells us how everything is. Um, and basically we just, I would say with TikTok without going too in depth, pick one thing to start with, um, things that are trending. So that's things that are popular and make it simple. So like there was one recently that's still trending and you may have seen it on the thing about TikTok is then it also can be used on Facebook and Instagram. So you, it's not just like you're stuck in TikTok, but there was a song that was like a country song. It was like a pretty slow dance. It was 30 seconds long. And that's one of the ones we learned in Millennium. Um, there's also singing things. There's a lot of acapella stuff on TikTok. Um, there was a warm up that Millennium learned. We posted on TikTok. It was, I can be brown, I can be blue, I can be violet yeah. sky. Yeah. And it was six parts. So our lead split and our, there was a, so we had two, so our lead split into three. There's really three lead parts. We had a tenor, a baritone, and a bass. And um, we just did it and we used it as a warm up for a whole month. It was, it's, everybody loves it now. It's so fun. It's very different. And it's super popular on TikTok. And we posted it and we, yeah, that's the we one had Ben little, Affleck did, right? Was it so Ben Affleck or one of, that did it, they put it on TikTok. Oh, it was some a bunch of actors. tons of people. Oh, no, yeah, one of the Ryans, I think. Laura Piankowski brought it to Sony and it's turned into an earworm. Yeah. We try um, not to do it every week because, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it was fun yeah. that first night and then it just like, get it out of my head. But yeah. So people are bringing these things to courses. There's, you can have somebody just kind of look into hashtags. So look up acapella. That's all you need on Twitter, Twit, on um, TikTok and just see what's out there. And there's a lot of other ones. There was one going around a few months ago that was like sea shanty acapella clips, all kinds of stuff. And you can incorporate it into your rehearsal so that it's not a waste of time. So a, a fun warm up, a fun physical warm up, and then teach it a few times. And then people who are comfortable filming it and then post on TikTok. It doesn't have to be like crazy. And then once you're performing again and you've built up kind of hopefully a following, um, you can post little clips from your performances and make them fun. And we even did the one that we haven't posted it yet, but it was one that was like, you did like this with your hands. And it, it talked about, it was like everybody was doing myths about their career or about stay at home moms or whatever. And so we were going to do myths about um, barbershop or street Adeline. We ended up not getting around to that, but it was an idea. Um, Can I ask so, a question? So if you're not on TikTok and you decide to get on TikTok, how do you promote the fact that you're on TikTok? Who picks up on that? I mean, we do it to our, I mean, it, it's basically our own sister, Sweet Adelines, who follow us. So the them trick work? about TikTok, and this is, this, was, this is a really good class because we could talk about this for a really long time. Um, the trick about TikTok is to follow the trends. And so when there's something trending, something that's popular, like a dance or an acapella, and that means thousands of people are participating in it, you post it and you use the same hashtags as the trend. And again, I, I will look into teaching your class on this because it's, and I'll share a screen, um, but you would use the same hashtags. And then people that are really into the trend, I mean, I have friends, I personally don't have a personal TikTok, but I have friends who will scroll through the same, they're watching people do the same thing over and over again, but everyone adds their own flair and personality to it and they'll watch it for hours. And so TikTok will use those hashtags and they'll put you within the trend. And as people scroll through, they might be like, wow, that was really cool. I wanna see what else they're gonna do. And they'll like your TikTok page. So initially it's not going to bring probably as many local people as you want, but eventually if, once you have a TikTok built up, you could put it, share it on your website. You can do a Young Woman in Harmony event and use like TikTok as a, as a base and get all those Young Women in Harmony to like your TikTok because they're going to be on it. 
So you're, it's going to be creative thinking because TikTok's available to everyone in the world. And someone, you could have followers that not a single one of them are from around your area. Um, again, we'll wrap this TikTok conversation up, but that's a really good point, Linda. Like, I would say of all of the all of the platforms, I would stay on Facebook because Sweet Out Alliance is an older organization and you don't want to lose that audience. But Instagram is kind of my like the millennials. Millennials don't really love Facebook. They're not so much into TikTok right now. It's Instagram is where it's at for that group. So you're talking your 30s and 40 year olds. And then 20s and younger, it's going to be some of the older 20s, it's going to be Instagram and TikTok. And then younger, they do TikTok. Um, Snapchat, Snapchat's kind of come, it's kind of gone out the window, but Snapchat's not for courses anyway. Anyways, I would say Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube are your places to go. YouTube, because everyone, YouTube is everywhere. And if you put something in Google, Google and YouTube are owned by the same platform. And so they're in sync. And if someone Googles your chorus, the YouTube videos you post are going to come up. And anyways, Yes, that's material is my favorite topic. So um, do you guys want me to teach a class on Facebook? On, on, I've done Facebook a lot, but I could do an Instagram TikTok class and we can talk about that a little more in depth. Okay. Yeah, and Facebook finally made it easy to post on Instagram and Facebook at the same time, which is nice. Yeah. But, uh, but we don't do anything on Instagram besides that, you know, besides yeah. the, yeah. Yeah. What I find about Instagram that's a little bit different than Facebook is Facebook, you can put hashtags on Facebook, but they don't mean it as much as they do on Instagram, where Instagram, the whole algorithm is, is run by the hashtag system. So that, again, we can talk about that in another class, but um, that was a really good idea to bring up. I do want to move on to internal marketing for a few minutes. So does anybody else have any questions about materials, digital or otherwise, that you're just like, I want to use this, but I don't know how? If you don't, I, my next class at two is on Canva. And I'm going to be walking through that tool, which is, I use Canva every single day. And it is one of the coolest tools out there. And it's free. So um, if you want to, come with me, same Zoom link. I'm going to be teaching about that. But okay, so let's move on to internal marketing. So internal marketing is not something that some people don't consider it marketing, but I do. I'm very a big proponent of this. Um, it's like you're like best friends with membership in internal marketing. And basically your job in internal marketing is to help membership and music team and management team. You, you, you want to, we don't want to just have frosting. We don't want to just be a cake with beautiful frosting, but the inside is never getting any special. Like we have dry cake. You want to be as sweet to the inside as you are to the outside. And so I taught a class on this when we did the um, um, travel in tune. Um, I was one of the teachers and I did a 10 minute set on internal marketing and why and how and why it's important. So I, I'm not going to rehash that today, but I'm going to touch on it a little bit. So internal marketing is going to be where you help the chorus leadership essentially market to the to your chorus. So are pe people showing up to things? Just like you ask people to show up to your performances to watch, you want to ask people to show up to rehearsals and you want to ask people to show up to perform in performances and to compete at contests and to volunteer. That's all marketing. It's just the flip side. So how can you, the four things I have written down today is membership retention, um, skill confidence. So what can you brainstorm with your music team and your membership coordinator and her, her team to build skill confidence that you guys can market to your members? Um, culture and leadership. So Marketing is essentially, internal marketing used in the business world is essentially getting everyone on the same page. And I think that's, that's and making sure everyone has the same buy-in on different topics. And so we'll start with membership retention. And this might be our biggest subject because I know, and I've heard in this, people are 
losing members, whether they're gone temporarily or they've just decided to leave. Um, I think this has been a really good transition time for people that were looking for a time to retire, maybe older, older members, and that's okay. But I also think there's people that have kind of given up and they're like, I don't want to just wait around for this to pick back up, right? Um, or the money, like why am I spending money on this when we're not really doing much? So I think we're coming, I'm hoping, we're coming back into a, a light at the end of the tunnel where we will have some activities again, like people are inviting people to outdoor holiday things, like you said, Nadine. So what? how can we... As the as from the marketing position, help the membership team create a plan for membership retention and membership coming back. Actually, any ideas? Good question. <laughs> yeah, who's got the answer to that one? <laughs> well, we're just brainstorming here. <laughs> no right or wrong answers. Yes, maybe. Well, well, we were hoping with our newsletter, because in that we highlight, you know, special events, things that we're doing, things that happened, like, hey, we went back to rehearsals in person. So the last one was we're going to go back to rehearsals. And then, you know, there's other things there. We're talking about our 55th anniversary. And it goes out to all the people who have ever been a member uh, of the chorus or who have been potential members who visited us and then decided, oh, maybe it's not for me. So until they actually this unsubscribe from the newsletter, they keep getting it. And we're hoping with that to create um, a feeling of, hey, th this is like, this sounds like really fun. It looks like they're having a lot of fun. Maybe I should go back or I'd like to go back and be part of that again. So that's what we're trying to do with that. But it's the same with Facebook. You're, you're reaching the same people with, with Facebook. Look, 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 what are we doing? We're having so much fun. You wouldn't, you love to join us again you know, without seeing it, but, you know, just enticing people by showing the things that you do, that you had a great time and maybe it's time to come back. Yeah, yeah, one I like thing that. we do, I mean, I, you guys probably all do this, but um, in HOTS, we live stream every rehearsal to our members only Facebook page. So the people who aren't coming to rehearsal can see how much fun we're having, you know. And see what they were missing. See what they're missing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, one, one thing that I like as a member is um, if the director compliments someone directly on that sounded really good when you sang that part or um, wow those tenors are sounding so good or whatever just some keep the praise coming because I think there is some hesitancy for singing with masks and it is hard um, and there is always sort of a concern that like you're going to catch a germ, you know, like I, I personally have that. So it's nice to balance that out with um, a more joyful atmosphere, I think. By the way, do you, any of you sing with those clear plastic shields? Because mm -mm. Marion somehow bought a whole bunch of them. So we all have them as well as our own other masks. Plus we have those ones that look like, you know, Aflac, the duck, the Broadway like singer. Ducks, yeah. So I sort of switch back and forth during the evening because it is certainly nice for Marion to see our faces when we are wearing the plastic shields. But, you know, they they do tend to make you sound like you're in an echo chamber. Plus, if you need to, you know, take a sip of water or put a lozenge in your mouth, you forget you have it on and you bang into it. So you have to, but anyway, I, I highly recommend them because they give you a different experience or an alternate experience when you are singing together, that's a little more pleasant for a while until mm, your forehead yeah. starts to bother you. We are, um, we just got, we just ordered two um, singers masks that actually have a clear mouth and they're supposed to be anti-fog. So we are trying them out and we're gonna see how that goes because we're tired of not being able to see each other <laughs> smile. Mm. And also when we personally, we're a directorless chorus and um, Millennium Magic, and we depend on facial cues. And I mean, obviously not when we're on the risers, but when we're learning music, 
that's how we work together is we watch each other's facial expressions and mouths to make sure that we're all in sync. And it's been really challenging with the masks for us. So um, we're going to, well, I'll let you guys know, I'm going to, if it goes well, I'll let the whole region know um, they're kind of pricey for masks. They're $20 each, but they're reusable. And if it works well and we can use them for performances down the road, because I'm sure for the next while, even once we're allowed to perform again, we're going to need masks. Um, we would love for our audience to be able to see our faces too. So um, anyway, that's another another subject. But um, I want to go back to Sally saying the director compliments because I think that's a huge thing. And not just directors. I think I'm guessing almost everyone on this chat is in some form of leadership within their chorus. Um, and if you're not, that's okay too. I think that it's really important for leadership of any kind to give a compliment because when you're a leader in your chorus, your chorus members know that you're a leader and there's a reason that you are. Whether it's marketing, whether it's the director, it doesn't matter. If you say to someone, really great job with whatever, it might be that they, you know, I don't know, brought an extra mask for somebody who didn't have one and they got it out of their purse or whatever. Just if somebody says, thank you for doing that, you know, that really helped tonight. I think right now, we all need that building up. Um, and I always encourage this, regardless of COVID or not, building up our members individually, calling them out by name. They don't need to be called out in front of everyone all the time, but just step aside and say, thanks for sewing that costume back together at contest the other day or at the performance. Maybe it was something small. They happened to have a sewing kit in their, in their bag, but they did something for somebody. So just being mindful of those things, especially if you're in leadership, I think is very important. And as right now, something we can do. So I've heard a lot of you say, we have 30 members on the book, but we only have 10 coming to rehearsal or something like that. Maybe you have 17 members on the books and you have 15 coming to rehearsal, but there's still people who are a part of your course that you're not interacting with. And I think that's the truth across every course right now. So maybe something that we can consider doing, which seems so old school and not fun, but maybe we can find ways to revamp it, is to have like a member of the week or a member recognition of some sort and ask, reach out to the people that aren't coming to rehearsal and say, we really miss you. And I'd love to, you've contributed so much to our chorus and I'm starting a member of the week or a member of the month. Can I highlight you? And I think that would give some of those people that I matter to this group feeling. Are they going to come back? Well, there's no guarantee, but I think it's really, you know, once you have pulled away from the group and you've kind of gotten to a new routine, you might forget what you're missing. And so to just be reached out or we're acknowledging you as a member of the month because of all you've contributed. I know you're not coming to rehearsal. Would you pop on to Zoom or pop into rehearsal for 10 minutes just so we can say thank you? and just try to get people plugged back in in like a really small increment way. That's an idea that I have. So. Um, we did something else that worked out incredibly, probably for a few months this past year. And instead of member for them, we, we used to do that. Uh, queen for a day, Yeah. our wonderful, funny former member who we just lost, Marilyn Averill, has such a sense of humor. So she created queen for a day. So she actually put all the members' names in a bowl and she and her husband picked out one. And it could have been someone who wasn't coming to a Zoom session, but she would call them. And so she would arrange an interview with them and give them a chance to highlight themselves. And she would ask them all kinds of questions. It was such a fun segment. It might've lasted 15 minutes, but we all learned so many things about the individual people who she chose to be queen for a day, so. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, no, anything, that, so like that anything like that, where you can really highlight people and yeah. would you guys all agree that every single member, without every single member, we are not who we are as a chorus, right? So it's not just the leadership that needs it. I, I, I have this perspective on a regional level. It's not just the winners or the medalists that get recognized. Every single chorus makes region one who we are and every single chorus matters. And on the smaller scale, that's the same in a chorus. It's not the best singer or the section leader or the director or the people on the management team that matter. Everyone matters. And without 
you know, your newest member who's still learning to your member that could can sight read at the drop of a hat and sings perfectly for everything, every person makes the chorus who they are. And no matter how much they're able to show up right now, if they're still a member of your chorus, they're still important. And so I think it's important for us to make people feel that way. I know we all probably feel that way, but I don't know that people know we feel that way, if that makes sense. Um, okay, so really quick, I just want to talk about, oh, we have about five minutes left. Um, I really want to touch on, I'm not going to touch on culture because that's so personal to every course, but I will say, think about your culture and how it's been affected by the pandemic positively and negatively. And think about what you can move forward with. Maybe this new year coming up would be a great time to do a culture check with your chorus and what do we want to carry into 2022 with us and what do we want to leave behind and truly like leave it behind and that just have that reset that's also part of rejuvenating your internal brand so I just want to mention that because cultures are so personal I can't give you a lot of advice on that but I would say it's a great time because we've been through so much to have a culture check mm. um, but leadership is the other thing I want to touch on so I know that all courses are struggling to have all of their leadership positions filled right now. It was a struggle before. It was. A, it's definitely a struggle now. And so the leaders that you do have or people who you can foster to be leaders who have potential, does anybody have any ideas of how to have leadership retention? Things we can do for our leaders. No, because in HOTS, we have the most members in the region and those of us here are the ones who do the work. Yeah. <laughs> and have mostly been like Pat. 20 years. <laughs> mostly Patty. She's the one that does the work. <laughs> Patty's the workhorse for us. Um, I think, I mean, here's, I think this is just tricky, but I think when someone acknowledges leadership and thank you for doing that, thank you for putting that together, it just puts like, a little bit of that like okay I'm going to keep doing this um, I think it, sometimes leadership especially not the front line leadership maybe a lot of the management team um, or even section leaders I think sometimes when you do it for a really long time people are so used to you doing such a great job that they forget that you're doing it for them and so if you whether you're a leader or you're not on this team, you, there are other leaders in your course that you follow, whether it's your director or your music team or your section leader, et cetera. Remember to praise your leaders and thank them. And I think that even during this time, like I was thinking that every year after contest, our course has a party and we have awards for the year. We haven't given out any awards since COVID, but you know what? It's been the most work that anybody's ever done. So I'm like, why didn't we do that? this year and maybe we're the only ones but I think just remembering to thank our leadership and I will tell you as an RMT member like this morning when Elaine said our virtual festival was the best one I was like oh that makes me feel so good because the RMT has been working really really hard and sometimes it just feels like you know are we just being redundant and nobody cares? <laughs> and I know you guys do, but I also feel that way within my own course. Like I'm on my management team and I'm like, oh, does the chorus even care about what I'm doing right now? Because everybody's just so over this, but I think they actually do. It's just sometimes everyone forgets to tell. And then I have to remember leaders that I follow in my course and my region in our region. I have to remember to say, thank you for doing that. You know, thank you for setting that up because it's important. So I just wanted to throw that out there because I worry about leadership retention and I feel like we don't talk about it very often. Uh, before we wrap up, could I just, I just want to make sure everybody knows that I put the link to the class survey in the chat. So if you would please click on it, fill it out, that would be awesome. All right, guys. Well, thank you for coming to this class. I know it was discussion based, but I think that was, it was really helpful. Um, you guys all have really good ideas and there are some things I'd like to revamp I I'm working on that but um it sounds like there are some classes that I can be teaching soon and um I have a class coming up now right like right now 
um, on Canva. I'd love for you to hang around if you want. And if you ever need me, um, you can reach out to me. Um, my email address is lala.region1marketing at gmail.com. And I love helping. I'm not, sometimes I'm a little slow to answer. I have a very busy work life, but when I'm available, I'm all yours. And I'm also, you can also text me. That's way better. Um, you can ask Patty. I answer texts way better than I do emails. Um, my text is 207. My phone number is 207 205-2739 and feel free to text me or call me anytime. And come back for Canva. I love Canva. Yes. I have to go make somebody Never a host, but I'll be back. Okay. Thanks, yeah. Lala. See you in 10 minutes. Thanks, yep. Lala. See you in 10 minutes, guys. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.